various people who was involved in this particular project, and I am very grateful for the help and contribution they had made right, in this project. Um, straight into the matter, this is the culprit. This is the mite that is causing havoc. This mite is so dis it's well distributed throughout Trinidad and Tobago, and is a major problem in coconut and other palms. Right? A very um, brief description. Actually, a lot of this has been spoken before by Max. I really would not go too much into that area, right, in terms of the description. Right? The main objective was really to preserve the biodiversity of the Nile River Swamp, but my main focus on the palm species. And uh, this work involved was three particular areas where we look at the uh, baseline studies to uh, investigate the distribution of those palms that were found in the Nile River Swamp, look at their susceptibility, and to probably come up with some method of control. Right, these are the people that were initially involved in the project. Right, uh, Mr. Sinorain um, Sipasad is involved here, but it's in this particular project, but he's not here right now <laughs> in the image. <laughs> right, introduction with respect to the Na River Swamp, it covers almost a total area of about 7,000 hectares. And it is designated as, the international as an international important um, area under the Ramsar Convention. And uh, in terms of the vegetation structure, there's a lot of plants, palm species distributed in this um, wetland area. And also, there are 10 indigenous palm of the 22 indigenous species found in Trinidad, and also we have coconut that is grown mainly along the coastline. Um, and there are a lot of negative impact that will normally affect the, the vegetation and the, or the biofauna and flora of the, the river swamp, and mainly you have things like fire, pests and diseases, you know, a, lo a lot of various things that will, I will point out a little later. Right, and this is the location of the, the river swamp. It's on the east coast of Trinidad. And it's separated, the swamp is separated by a band of almost 22 kilometers of coconut. Right, and this is very important to the, the swamp area. This is what the structure of the, the vegetative structure of the, the river swamp looked like. And if you realize, there's a composition of um, um, a lot of different vegetation. We have the terrestrial forest, palm forest, mangrove, and various palm species. Right? And if you look at the biofauna, the biofauna of the, the river swamp, it's composed of a lot of um, important. Um, we have things like the crustacean, insects, arachnids, and so it's, 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 a, it's a really important site or place for studies and research and for people to visit and enjoy the area, right? These are some of the biofauna that is we could find there, and as I pointed they're also associated with the Moorish palm, and especially a lot of these animals depend on these palms for their habitat and, um, and food, right? Now, this is the... the Mokor that we normally talk about, the... Right, the, the blue and gold macaw, which is very, very important to us in the river swamp. And um, many times when we talk about the river swamp, we always refer to these uh, macaw. We have also the red bellied and even parrots, right? So they are very important um, um, It's a very important um, 
especially for people who visit in, the, in, in that particular area. Now, the benefits of the No River Swamp in respect to, as I said, the biofaunas, we have um, various palm species, and they also, the residents also depend on this particular area for their existence, probably accessing things like um, the, the fish, even some of them illegally um, harvest some of these birds, and they even destroy the palm hearts in order to get the heart for cooking, right? Agriculture is a very important um, part of the, the, the swamp also. So when we all make the trip, we will realize some of the things and the benefits that is, you know, we will get from that area. Okay, so in this study, in, in order to lo look at the distribution, certain things were done. I would not go down too much on this here. The PowerPoint will be available to everybody, and if there's anything, all this will be in the publication, right? Right, the methodology, right, that is involved. I would not venture too much on that, right? This is the baseline study. But what I want to point out too is that there are two important palm species here. We have the, the Moorish palm and the Rostonia palm, right? And as I said, the bird, the parrots, they are all dependent on that. And they are focused mainly on the, if you notice, on the eastern part of the swamp, right? <coughs> now, during our to determine the distribution of the swamp, um, the palm species in the swamp, we had divided the palm, the, the swamp into two, three areas. And if you notice, we have the um, the the distribution in respect to the interior part of the swamp, the coastline, and then also um, the coastline, intermediate, and inland. And most of the farm species were focused on the in, within the inland area, right? Coconut were mainly on the coastline, right? These are some of the farm species, and I put this mainly for you all to who will be probably visiting there tomorrow. We have the royal palm, we have um, roso, we have the yo-yo palm, which is the shortest palm we have in Trinidad, and then also we have the coconut. Everybody know that we have the carrot. We have um, two Desmanca species, right? And then we have the cocorite and two species of um, manak. And the most important one is the Moorish palm. Now, this gives an idea of the distribution of the palm species within the river swamp, right? We have the coastline with the coconut in yellow. Right? And this is an overall view of where most of the palms used to be distributed inland within the bush bush area, the intermediate area, and the coastline area. And again, as I said, we have this line of coconut. And this is very important. That is why it is highlighted here. Right? So we have. Okay, we could, if you notice, most of the, 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 in the, the palms within the coastline is coconut. Now, some of the main pests of these palms, especially arachnids, uh, the red palm mite, which we, this is the invasive species, we also have associated with the palms other mites like the spider mite, aerophid mite, two species of aerophid mite, one that affects the fruit and coconut. And then we also have uh, another aerophid mite that is found on, on some of the leaves of palm, which could be, um, if you're not familiar with the symptoms, you could get mixed up with, and believe that probably that might be the effect of um, the red palm mite. Right, so there are other threats to, to palm, and there are a lot of, um, a number of, um, Arthropods that also cause problems in these palms. And the reason I'm pointing out these is because we look and we want to move into a system where you a holistic approach in order to deal with the, 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 the red palm mite. And there are other species that is present, and especially if you're looking at the biological control, 
we will see how these are very important, these other arthropods. Right? There are also other pests that also attacks the palm, especially the seeds. We have the cocorite and the desmoncus. The seeds are being affected mainly by the Pachymeros cardo, which is a, um, these normally feed on the seeds, and, and, and I don't want to delve too much into that, but um, they are very, very important in the survival and the rejuvenation of the palm species within the Nile River swamp. We also have diseases. There are two important diseases that I have picked up, and especially on the royal palm, which is the, this particular um, leaf spot, and uh, this has been causing a lot of problem in the in the swamp in the in the in the royal palm. And what had probably caused me to look at this is because when I went into the swamp, you see a number of trees that were tall, some that were medium height, and then also. In some places, you have a lot of seedlings, and then after, when you revisit, you're not seeing much seedling. And um, we'll talk about that uh, maybe, probably, when we discuss in the, the approach to, to deal with the, dealing with the red palm. Right? Also, the same, similar thing with the, with the Moorish palm. There's another important disease, and um, I think it is not fully identified. I think Kabi is still trying to really determine exactly the true um, causal agent, but the suspect is uh, Ascochita. And um, it's, it's amazing, probably, when we visit this swamp, you may probably have the experience of looking to see, again, that these are some of the insect or fungal pathogens that could affect also the rejuvenation and the survival of these um, palm species. Right, so let us go straight now into the red palmite. Now, the host, there are over 100 palm, um, plant species that were that are documented with affecting the, if you notice here, affecting um, or recorded for, of, um, for a host of red palmite. We have in Trinidad, I have established almost about 50 palm species, and if you notice, they include a range of other plants here, right? So I just highlight the list there, but I won't go through those, so just uh, for information for you all. And then we did our sampling, where we look at, there are three different leaf structure, where we have the pinnate type, we have the palm type, and then we have a vining type palm, which is the desmoncus, and then we have the yo-yo palm that give you this sort of, um, um, similar to the, 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 the palm, the pinea palm, but the leaf structure is different. So sampling in a river swamp is not similar to what um, that you will normally use, like for, especially for coconut, right? So this is the method that we use, where I, this, we divide the palm leaf into three different areas and we take subsamples in order to look at the population of the mites. Right, so you collect a lot of information on these palm species in respect to the number of leaves, number of um, the damage rating, right, the population. So a, a, a lot of information were collected from these palms. But what was important though was two, only two palm that was found to be the, the main host of the red palmite. We had the Moorish palm and coconut, these two palm. Right? The other palms, we did not pick up the mite there. Although in some areas, beside the river sand, the red palm mite were found on these leaves, but of low population, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, we are presently looking at the host range of these palm species. And they are interesting, there are some interesting um, preliminary results that indicate that some of the other palms are hosts, but they are weak hosts, right? But for our concern, I think the Moorish palm and the coconut is most important. And here now, you could see the impact of the red palmite on Moorish palm, on the number of leaf. There's also a lot of damage, very high populations on the leaf, and you also have poor yield, right? So this is the sort of um, 
appearance that you will normally see on the Moorish leaf palm. And this, these are leaves that were taken mainly in the, the palm forest. Yeah. Right? And this is also sampling. And if you notice, the seedlings, mature plants are also affected. Right? The population on the thing. And then we have um, the sort of damage that you could get in terms of the, the damage and the number of leaf and population count and whatever it is. We have all those. But what I, what I want to show you is where the the mite is distributed throughout wherever the Moorish palm has been found. It's distributed throughout the swamp, right? And this is the population of this, the, the mite, very high in the Moorish palm, and also on coconut, right? Notice the mean in red. Also for coconut, is a similar situation, right? Very high population. And also, these palms, the Moorish palm, were tested under greenhouse condition, and they were very good hosts. If you notice, they're very high population that you could actually get on the seedlings of the Moorish palm. Right? With respect to coconut, as I said, it could cause a lot of damage. And if you notice, now some of the people in the, in the river swamp, they have to do other cropping system in order to supplement their, their um, livelihood because they cannot really depend too much on the coconut, right? And if that did not really create an impact, I hope this one creates an impact in respect to the kind of effect that palm might could actually have on the coconut um, industry because this is in Sidra's carcass area. It shows you from the, the, the inception when the palm might came into it, when we have discovered the palm might in 2006, what had happened with the decline of eel, right, over time. Now, this may not solely be depend, um, on, due to the, the red palm, there may be other factors, but actually, from that time onwards, to the present time, there was total, a continuous decline of yield in the coconut industry. Right? Biological control, there are a number of biological agents that were found associated with the red palm and other pests. Right? So these are some of the biological agents that we have found that is associated with the red palmite and some of them as I said they would normally feed on the other arthropods that is found on the leaves of the, the palms right and one very important one is the, the lacewing right very effective feeder right um, we normally refer to as a trash carrying lacewing it normally will feed and throw the palmite on top of its back if you notice there yeah. right and this is the different um, we have eggs you could get very high um, number of eggs in the in the in the leaves, right? There are uh, other um, feeders like beetles. Also, there are a lot of other um, um, natural enemies that you could find associated with the palm uh, with the red palmite. And these are the ones that were found mainly on the the Moorish palm, right? Also, one important thing is that, as I had mentioned before, fire. Fires are very, we think, we think in terms of maintaining the biodiversity, so I, I, I really could not leave out fire and other pests. So fire is one of the important things. And this, is, this, this happened last year. This is the same field, same, same plants. So you could imagine if this is happening. You have red palmite, you have fire, and then also from my personal experience, what I have found that anytime you have fire, the population of red palmite tend to explode. The reason being because of a lot of the natural enemies are being destroyed. Right? Okay, and what we should take into consideration also is that we, because of the location of the swamp, and this is what I have mentioned about the, the coconut along the coastline, and we have the northeast trade winds that will normally move these um, mites into the interior part of the land where it will affect the, the Moorish palm. Now, the consequences of the red palm mite. All right, as you have observed, anytime we have the decline of these palm, we have, whether it's due to fire, um, agricultural purposes, or whatever it is, right? We have um, um, reduced food source for the, for the macaws and other animals. Then we could also have migration of these where they become pests, right? And cocoa estates in the neighboring areas, right? In summary, what I will say that the, the Moorish palm and coconut are major hosts in the inner river swamp. The combined effects of mite, insects, and pests, and stress, and whatever it is, will affect the plant health. And then there are a number of natural enemies that we have observed, 
and the Moorish palm is an important carbon sequestration, and therefore efforts should be at least to make in order to, 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 to try and plant and rejuvenate uh, the, 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 the river spam with more of these palms. Um, the way forward, we look at, um, we need to do more monitoring. We look, have to look at um, the combination of, uh, um, continuation of assessment and multiplication of the, some of these indigenous and, um, predators, development of adaptable and sustainable management practices, right? Um, determination, selection, and screening of Moorish palm species, and also we need to at least train people and have facilities in order to make sure that we could have a lot of plants to put into the in the in the, the swamp. And now these are the people that the, this, doing the job was a very challenging one, right? We had to go through a lot of harsh environment, and these are the kind of thing that we have to go.